Hey carnivores, SP fam, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Bella the Steak and Butter Gal. I hope you all are having a beautiful, or should I say, Gouda meat fuel day. He's so sick of that saying now. So we're matching today. He has his bright red hoodie on. I'm wearing my uh, bright red striped hoodie, jacket, whatever you want to call it. And we are just chilling today. So my last video, I filmed about five specific foods that I am no longer eating as a carnivore. And I thought I would make a continuation video on all of the foods that I am currently eating and thriving on as a carnivore. So I do intend on going into extreme detail. I will share all of the foods, cuts of meat to promote good health, optimal energy and mental function, zero brain fog, zero bloat, Absolutely, these foods will help with fat loss and body recomposition. I have divided all of the foods into different categories. So they do fall into a total of five categories, five types of foods that I am currently thriving on. And these five categories, I also recommend for all people who are trying to start the carnivore diet or who want to tweak, improve certain things as a carnivore. Oh my gosh, Gouda is just too cute. He's literally falling asleep in my arms. All right, Gouda, shall we get this video started? Okay, let's talk about the first category. The first category is labeled beef all things beef within this one category alone there are so many options just endless cuts of beef i will now give you guys my top recommended and favorite cuts of beef now all of these recommendations are not only delicious but they will help you feel amazing they will help you get to your weight loss goals and they're also this is the priority actually, extremely easy to cook. The first cut of beef that I recommend is ground beef. This is most definitely a staple in my kitchen. Not only is ground beef extremely versatile, you can probably come up with 100 plus recipes with just this one ingredient alone, but it is so affordable. It is extremely budget friendly. It is a great meal if you are in a rush and you quickly have to whip something up before you head out the door because you can just literally throw your ground beef on a hot pan, no cooking oil needed because there is always fat in ground beef. Saute it up, pack it and go. And that is a perfect meal. You don't even have to take any time to shape it and mold it into patties. I personally don't do that. I just throw the whole pack of ground beef loose and just saute it. I love 80-20 ground beef. So 80% lean, 20% fat. I find that is a perfect ratio for juicy, tender ground meat. But I also know a lot of carnivores prefer it a little bit leaner. So you can definitely explore the ratios. However, I've noticed 80-20 ground beef is always the cheapest option. If you want it to be a leaner meal, you can still go with 80-20 ground beef because once you cook it, all of that fat will liquidize, melt, and render out anyways. So you can always pour that out, save it as a cooking oil. You do not have to eat all of that fat after you cook it. Just check out the links below to see my entire uh, recipe playlist. Next cut of beef that I recommend, short ribs. Short ribs are just hands down the best food ever. There's something about picking up your meat and enjoying it with your hands that is just so satisfying. Now with short ribs, it's usually cut into two styles. One is the American style, just classic short rib cut. And the other is the Asian Korean style where it's cut into thin flanken slices. So there are long strips but very thin. So I personally recommend that one, the flank and cut short ribs, only because I find it so much easier to eat, a lot quicker to cook, and less of a chance that you will be nauseated after the meal. There's something about the thick cut short ribs that really, really causes nausea for a lot of carnivores, me included. In fact, I have a whole video just sharing my entire um, experience eating way too many of those thick short ribs and having a beef aversion afterwards. So I would actually be very careful with the thick cut short ribs. However, I have never experienced nausea or aversion when I opted for the flanken a uh, flat, thin, sliced short rib. It is a little bit more difficult to find because a lot of butchers don't even offer that in their selection of meats. So what I recommend is always calling your butcher shop ahead of time. I usually just say, could I please make a custom order of your short ribs cut 
flanken style and take into account that there is bone in each of those strips so if you actually want enough food maybe just order a little bit more than you think i usually do eight pounds and for me each meal of just flanken short ribs i'll need at least four pounds and my last recommendation within this category of beef is obviously ribeye some days when i want something leaner i will just go with new york strips so with ribeyes and new york strips the biggest concern is the price. And I know a lot of carnivores who are trying to stay under a budget cannot afford ribeyes or New York strips, which is why I put it last in my recommendations within this category. But there truly is something magical about ribeyes because of the fat to protein ratio that is just naturally in a ribeye steak. There are actually a lot of experienced carnivores who eat nothing but ribeyes. That's just how nutrient dense, nutritious, enjoyable, and delicious it is. As you all know, I did a beef only experiment for eight months. I was planning to just do it for 30 days, but I felt so amazing that it extended up to eight months. And that was actually the food that I ate a lot of plus ground beef, but I started veering towards ribeyes just because it was so delicious it is so quick to cook if you just sear it on your stovetop takes no more than five minutes and when you cook your steaks rare you are pretty much getting all of the top quality nutrients your body could ever need so there is definitely a lot of magic and amazingness in the ribeye steak so that's why I have to recommend it. The only thing is the price, but I do have tips to get good deals on ribeyes. And that is to go to your local grocery store, not your butcher shop, because no matter what, butcher shops will always charge premium prices, but your grocery stores. So for example, if you have a Kroger's, a Ralph's, a Fred Meyer's near you, those types of grocery stores, will usually have manager's special prices. And manager's special is basically a discounted price for meat that is about to go bad. So it's not as fresh, but the times that I've tried these manager's special meats, they're perfectly delicious, they're fine, they are not spoiled. So if you really need a budget-friendly price, manager's special in your local grocery store could be your saving grace for delicious ribeye steaks. My go-to option is Butcher Box. I have been getting their meats delivered to my door for the past almost year now. So the quality is hands down probably the best you can get your hands on because it's grass-fed, grass-finished. No, you do not have to only eat grass-fed, grass-finished meats on the carnivore diet but i personally love it because of the taste so there's something super complex almost grassy and robust about butcher boxes grass-fed grass-finished steak the only downside to their ribeyes is that the size is not nearly that satisfying thick cut big juicy portion they're actually portioned and cut quite thin and small um, but that's okay because i just cook up four to five for each of my meals whole foods also has excellent quality delicious ribeyes but of course the prices will not be as budget friendly as the manager's special deals at your local grocery stores and if you have a costco membership i of course recommend you guys get the whole ribeye roast to get the cheapest highest quality ribeye price all recommendations and places that I source my meats will always be linked down below in the description box. So let's move on to the next category. I only listed one food and it's pork belly. It's the only cut of pork that I would eat just because I thrive on a very high fat carnivore diet. If you watched my previous video, you know that I don't like to season my meats. I also don't like to salt it, which is why I have completely ruled out bacon. I personally feel like bacon is just way too salty, way too heavily seasoned with um, spices and pepper, and I just don't feel my best when I eat bacon. With pork belly, you can decide how you want to cook it, how you want to slice it. You can slice it literally into bacon strips and make your own fresh bacon. With pork belly, a big concern is the omega-6 to omega-3 ratios, but I wouldn't be worried about it as long as you source it from a trustworthy and high quality place. From what what I have experienced with the pork belly from Whole Foods, which is my go-to spot to get pork belly, I have not felt or experienced any issues whenever I eat their pork belly. I honestly don't ever eat pork belly as a main meal. I'll always have it as a side, as an appetizer, kind of as an add-on to my steak meals or beef meals. You can request your butcher guy to slice it into bacon thin strips, and then you can bake it, air fry it the way that you want, season it with whatever you would like to season 
season it to your taste and not only are you saving money but you are probably eating something that is a lot lower in histamine so the next category of carnivore foods that i have been loving and eating is poultry so poultry is actually a new addition into my carnivore diet uh, because my first two years i did not eat any poultry at all all. So it wasn't until I ended my beef only phase when I started to explore the poultry world. I can now recommend the following cuts of meat that go into this category. And that is chicken wings and chicken drumettes. And also I have tried turkey wings, which are also delicious, but there's something about chicken wings and drumettes that are not only easy to cook, but they are extremely budget friendly and affordable. And of course they are very delicious. I source my chicken wings from ButcherBox. I have to say ButcherBox has the fat chicken wings I've ever tried. I've also tried Costco's chicken wings. I don't really recommend them because they have a strange um, aftertaste. So I feel like the quality from Costco is not as good. What I do recommend though is Whole Foods. Well-priced too, chicken wings. They usually price it from $4.79 up to $5.49. Sometimes I've even seen it go on sale for as low as $3 per pound for their chicken party wings. Now with turkey wings, I only included that because it's it's also an excellent option. It's fatty, it is delicious, and it is probably the most budget-friendly meat you can ever find on the carnivore diet that is still high fat and delicious. A lot of the times when budget-friendly options are brought up, the meats that are included are way too lean for my taste. They're way too low in fat and they're super tough uh, when you cook it. And it's just difficult to cook. So that's why turkey wings I had to add in this category. I have bought it myself for $1.50 per pound. The next category to explore is eggs. Now eggs is probably hands down the most versatile carnivore food yet because not only can you turn it into fried eggs, scrambled eggs, hard boil them, you can also turn it into egg pudding. Probably the most unique consistency and texture on the carnivore diet. Literally the texture of a pudding, of a flan. And yes, I have a recipe, actually many recipe videos showing you how to make egg pudding. It's actually my mom's famous traditional Chinese dish. It's called zheng ji dan, which is directly translated as steamed chicken egg but I kind of just love the name egg pudding. And ever since I posted the video of egg pudding and shared it on Instagram, it has become probably the most popular and most loved carnivore recipe. Now within the category of eggs, you guys have the options to explore not only chicken eggs, but also quail eggs, goose eggs, and duck eggs. I have tried all four of these eggs. You'd be surprised, but chicken eggs are the strongest in flavor. The bigger the eggs become, the milder the flavor. So so if you're afraid of trying, for example, duck eggs because you're afraid that it might taste way too strong or eggy, it's actually the opposite. It becomes more mild, more subtle in flavor as the egg size increases. So feel free to explore that category alone. You can make goose egg pudding, duck egg pudding. You can make egg pudding with any of these eggs. The last and final category that I highly recommend and enjoy is seafood. So seafood, I actually incorporated right when I started carnivore because I have a very, very deep love for sashimi. As an Asian, I grew up eating lots and lots of raw fish, raw seafood. Salmon belly, salmon sashimi is one of my favorite foods of all time. So when I started carnivore, I knew that it had to be part of my staples. So seafood is an excellent category to explore because not only will you get delicious variety, you also get minerals and nutrients that are not as abundantly available in red meat. So with seafood, I highly recommend salmon, of course. Black cod is hands down the best food to steam. You get this delicious fall apart, melt in your mouth meat and it's so fatty and flavorful just on its own. And in Chinese cuisine, we absolutely adore just steaming this cut of fish up. It's probably the best way to cook it. I recently started incorporating a lot more shrimp in my diet. I've tried sauteing it, but I prefer to just boil it up. You can steam it or boil it. There's something about boiled shrimp that is so much easier to eat as well when you saute it. 
um, the skin is much more difficult to like peel off but i also enjoy eating shrimp with the skin on and eating all the legs the tail included so i do highly recommend shrimp i also highly recommend incorporating sardines in your carnivore diet it is super easy to bring on the go i usually get the canned sardines unsalted in water is my preference and they are extremely nutrient dense high in iodine high in nutrients and minerals that are not easily found in red meat poultry or pork you may have noticed that in these five categories i didn't mention lamb it is so similar in the nutrient density profile to beef and because it is more expensive generally than beef i just didn't include it it's not in my kitchen currently it's not in my fridge it's not even in my freezer and i kind of just see lamb as a treat anytime i want something extra fancy or a treat for myself something that i am willing to invest more money in i usually look to lamb but i will just tell you right now that with lamb i only buy from billy doe meats because they don't age it at all and i have a huge issue with the aftertaste of normal lamb cuts that you get in you know your grocery store or butcher shop i just cannot stand that gamey gamey aftertaste of lamb so that's why i rarely really eat lamb as a carnivore because of the price and the difficulty of finding a delicious non-gamey lamb but if you are looking for a non-gamey lamb billy doe meats is hands down the best source for fresh non-gamey unaged lamb i personally will recommend lamb chops lamb loins and lamb ribs and now before i wrap up the video i have two more mini categories of foods slash ingredients that are very important on the carnivore diet and that is cooking oils and seasonings slash electrolytes so let's go through the electrolytes first you all know that you can just salt your meats to get in the electrolytes you need but for a lot of people just salting meats is not enough to prevent the leg cramps uh, to prevent the migraines and the headaches the low energy the fatigue the dizziness that tend to happen during the adaptation phase of starting carnivore so that's why i highly recommend element electrolytes it is spelled lmnt these are what the full size boxes look like they have all the electrolytes that you need sodium magnesium and potassium in extremely travel friendly mini single packets that are extremely easy to travel with you can throw it in your school work bag and you can treat these almost as an energy drink an energy boost a lot of carnivores rely heavily on these little packets they put it in their water their coffee even and they drink it up to get the electrolytes that their body needs to feel energetic to perform their best as i mentioned i don't salt i don't supplement with anything on the carnivore diet I do find that the longer you are a carnivore, the less you need to rely on electrolytes, salts, supplements. But of course, if you're new to carnivore, electrolytes may be a lifesaver because leg cramps may happen, headaches, low energy, fatigue. This one is orange salt. Steak and Butter Guy loves the flavored ones, but I just had to get the unflavored one for him as well because I personally feel like if you can avoid stevia, any sweeteners at all, that would be ideal. This is the raw unflavored, it is completely carnivore friendly. If you guys are interested in trying a free sample pack, you can feel free to click the link down below in the description box or type the URL on the screen to get your own free sample pack of Element Electrolytes. You will have to pay for the shipping fee though, but everything else is free. Now seasonings wise, I mentioned that black pepper is a food slash ingredient that I no longer eat in my previous video. So if you wanna find out why, feel free to watch that video. But if you are looking for seasonings that will add some pizzazz to your carnivore meals, uh, black pepper is great. Something that is lower in oxalates than black pepper is white pepper. So that's a great substitute. You can definitely use, you know, garlic powder, onion powder, but I noticed that, you know, the longer that you are a carnivore, the less you need to rely on seasonings and flavorings uh, to enhance your meals because your taste buds do change the longer you stick with this way of eating and you start loving the pure untouched flavor of meats alone. And my final mini category that I have to mention is cooking oils. So I get asked almost every single day on Instagram through DMs or comments, uh, what cooking oil one should use as a carnivore. 
To be honest, most of the times when I cook my carnivore meals, I don't use any cooking oil at all because usually the meat that I cook has a bunch of fat that will render out and act as the cooking oil. So for example, if you're cooking ground beef, you definitely don't need any cooking oil because there is so much fat that will render and seep out of that ground beef and that alone will become that cooking oil you need. Many times, the amount of fat that drips out of ground beef is so much that you can actually save it in a glass container and use that as your go-to source for cooking oil. So what that beef fat is called is tallow. So tallow is an excellent carnivore cooking oil. You can literally get it for free from your ground beef, from any fat that is rendered out of your ribeye, any beef. It will naturally harden into this creamy white solid fat, almost similar to butter. And you can just leave it on your countertop on your kitchen and kind of just scoop it out anytime you need some cooking oil. It's an excellent carnivore pro hack, pro tip uh, to save money and always have cooking oil on hand. Now you can do the same actually with pork fat and that would be called lard. So I know a lot of carnivores love that bacon fat. It is filled with lots of uh, flavor. Whatever the bacon was seasoned and salted with, it will be in that bacon fat. Now the next best option for cooking oil obviously is butter. Butter is excellent because it gives you this creamy milky flavor. The flavor that butter gives you when you add it into your meals, there's nothing like it. It's just this creamy, delicious, milky flavor. I leaned on butter so, so much. Literally as a snack, as a carnivore bar, I would pack it, sticks and sticks of butter anytime I'm on the go and just eat that pure fat. It's a great energy boost mood booster. It nourished me so, so deeply. It helped me heal and get the results that I got on carnivore diet so quickly. I personally love unsalted butter, again, because I don't eat salt. So it's up to you if you want salted butter or unsalted butter. But butter, hands down, is an excellent option as a cooking oil. You can also top all of your carnivore meals with slices of cold butter. I did that as well. It's an excellent way to add more flavor, more texture, and more fats to your carnivore diet. And if you are sensitive to the amount of lactose in butter, I highly recommend trying ghee. G-H-E-E -E, because it is basically clarified butter. So all of the tiny amounts of lactose is completely removed from ghee. So if you're sensitive to butter, definitely experiment with ghee. So there you go. Those are all of the categories all of the foods that I highly recommend on the carnivore diet, all of these foods I personally enjoy, lean on, thrive on. I do hope that you found this video helpful. And if you did, please don't forget to hit subscribe, hit like down below. Feel free to share this video and my channel with your friends and family. And as always, if you are looking for a community, a support group for 24 seven help, guidance, and inspiration, come join my Steak and Butter Gang community and 30 day carnivore challenge challenges. We welcome in any experience levels. You can be carnivore for five plus years and you will still find the connection, the inspiration and help you need. You can be completely new to carnivore. You could not even have started carnivore and this community will definitely help you guys out immensely. As always, all links to sign up for the next challenge and join the community is going to be down below in the description box. Feel free to read more on the details, who the guest speakers are, what types of meetings are included in the challenges. You can also go to sbgmeetup.com to learn everything you need about the community and the carnivore challenges. I have to give a huge shout out to my team of carnivore coaches, coach Steven, coach Raymond, coach Emily, coach Adek, and coach Cherish. I love you guys so much. Once you join the challenges, you will get to meet all of these coaches because they each teach different meetings throughout the month. So coach Steven teaches and hosts all fat loss and fitness meetings because that is his expertise. He also hosts all carnivore health concerns, lab work, diabetes and obesity meetings because those are also his specialties. He will teach you how to understand and read lab work. And then we have Coach Raymond and Emily, the power duo. They teach all priming 101 classes 
every single Tuesday and of course all feasting and fasting classes every Sunday. You will not only learn how to advance your fasting routine, but you will also be able to access their weekly fasting schedules for beginner, intermediate, and advanced levels. These schedules are custom curated by Coach Raymond to help you guys easily advance your fasting routine and get the fat loss, body recomposition goals that you are looking for. And then we have the amazing, beautiful, and brilliant female duo Coach Adek and Coach Cherish, who hosts the weekly Carnivore 101 meetings. So this is for anyone who is new to Carnivore, who has not yet started Carnivore, who needs that guidance, accountability, and support to start in the best way possible. So during these meetings with Adek and Cherish, they will give you their best pro tips on how to start the Carnivore diet. They will give you all of the answers and guidance you need to get over the inevitable um, adaptation symptoms when you do start the Carnivore diet. And the rest of the meetings throughout the week are community meetings. I host these meetings meetings alongside all of the carnivore coaches I just mentioned, where we focus on you guys, the community. It's an amazing chance for members to share updates, to troubleshoot, and of course, to connect with each other. These community calls are actually my favorite because it gives me an opportunity to hear from the carnivores in the community, how they are doing, their updates, their progress, and also what they are struggling with. I'm often in those meetings, just clapping, cheering, celebrating, partying with everyone. And it is just such a fun time. I am here for you and the steak and butter gang is always open for you guys to join. All right, guys, I will see you all in the next video. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your week. Sending love and meaty thoughts. SVG out. Okay, but what are we performing tonight? Rhapsody in white. No. In purple. No. In black. No. In blue. Yes, by George Gershwin. George Gershwin. <laughs>